What's up friends, today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new eSkate remote, and that is the BKB Voyager. This remote by Build Kit Boards is a collaboration between both Build Kit Boards and Spin 10 Electronics and should be compatible with all kinds of VESC based ESCs as well as the Spin 10 U-Box. Now this remote that I've got here in my hand is technically a beta unit, so here is a massive disclaimer. This is a beta unit. Any issues that I experienced with this one may or may not necessarily show up in the production model, but I wanted to make sure you guys got a exclusive first look at this remote to give you a lowdown on all of the different features, how it feels and what I think of it in general. So hopefully you guys enjoy this first look and uh, let's go ahead and get on with the unboxing. All right, let's get started with the unboxing experience. Should be pretty quick as there's not too much to unpack here. First of all, I like to just look at the box. It's honestly a pretty cool box and you see some remote companies with just a plain cardboard box, but BKB went all out and got a really nice print on here. Now, there's not too much in here, honestly. First, you got the remote, of course, packaged decently well have the little finger that you can put on for additional support. We've got a custom BKB USB cable, which is pretty neat. And finally, we've got a cable for a VESC 6 and a cable for a VESC 4 and the little teeny tiny receiver. And honestly, this is probably one of the smallest receivers that I've ever seen for a eSkate remote. Let's go ahead and take out the BKB Voyager. And honestly, this remote is super cool. Some of you might remember this style of remote from back when we had the Photon remote or the Nunchuck remote mods, but this is a much more evolved version of it. And as soon as you hold this thing, it is amazing, just the feeling just fits your hands so well. Onto the next part of the video, we're going to kind of have a basic structure here. While this isn't a complete review of this remote, I want to give you guys a, a bit of a structure so you can go through and figure out exactly what I'm trying to get across. Our first section here is going to be on the size and shape of the remote, followed up by the durability and build quality of it. And then we'll go into some of the features and I'll talk about some things that I find interesting. And then after all that, we'll go through some of the things that I don't like and cover the things that Build Kit Boards is going to be doing in order to improve the beta remote before the production unit, which comes out today. All right, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the size and shape of this remote. This remote is a very interesting design. Some of you may see this and remember something called the Photon remote back in the day. You might also see this and think, wow, that's literally a wee nunchuck. And uh, you wouldn't be completely wrong. Uh, there are remotes in the past that look very similar to this, but I don't believe that they're re really on the same level of polish or nearly as feature packed as this one. However, I never used those, but I know that there was a lot of issues with the nunchuck remotes back in the day with, uh, I think it's called uh, stick drift, where over time the joystick on those remotes would wear out and you'd end up with a little bit of a drift forwards or backwards on your remote and you definitely just don't want that when you're riding. Anyways, this remote is designed around ergonomics and I do have to say as soon as you get this remote in a hand, at least for my hand size, it just feels super natural. I'm not really sure exactly why it feels so much more natural than other remotes, but part of it I think is because the shape and size of the hand grip 
fits your hand just a lot better than uh, something like a square or a squared off rectangle or even a rounded rectangle and uh, just feels really nice. Your three fingers go onto the bottom really easily. Your index finger goes onto the uh, trigger-ish area. And then your thumb ends up on the top, which controls your movement through this joystick. Now, I'm not 100% sold on the joystick as of yet. Um, I'm more of a trigger guy myself, but at the same time, I do also appreciate thumb wheels. And I do ride with thumb wheels frequently, including the Hoyt Puck and uh, the VX1 and um, the basic hobby wing remote. Now for this remote, it did take a little bit of getting used to because this trigger is pretty sensitive and due to the positioning of it on top here, it makes it a little bit difficult when you have gloves on and we'll talk about that later. But at the very base value, this is very comfortable. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily the most ergonomic e-skate remote as they claim, but it's definitely comfortable. And if you have around the same size hand as me, which is like fairly decent size, I don't think I'll have any problems with it. And I think people with even bigger hands, they still will have a little bit extra room to wrap their fingers around. And uh, smaller hands probably won't have a problem either because the way this actual grip is shaped it's pretty even all the way around. It's more like gripping a, a nice handlebar grip on a bike than it is gripping an e-skate remote. So I'm really happy with what they did with the design here, but unfortunately that kind of falls apart as soon as you get into using gloves. Now I'll show some footage on the screen now of me holding this with gloves. And unfortunately, partly due to the design and the placement of the uh, joystick on here, it just doesn't lend itself super well to using it with gloves. Now, I did bring this up in our beta tester group and uh, Jared pointed out that <clears throat> the main uh, selling market of an ergonomic remote is to people without gloves, which I mean, I think is a little bit confusing because I never ride without gloves anymore, but the only ones I was able to use with this remote were the super thin Fox mountain biking gloves, which I've been using with my Maytech V2 remote which also suffers from the same problem uh, not being super easy to use with certain gloves. Anyways, overall, super ergonomic remote, super comfortable for basic hands, and uh, I would recommend it to most people. Most hand sizes I think will be fine, and it's uh, definitely completely different than anything else on the market right now. Before we completely close out the size and form section, I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of footage comparing the shape and size of this remote to some of my other ones that I've got on hand. This remote is kind of a mid-size coming in between the larger remotes like the GT2e Mods and the Maytag V2 and the smaller remotes like the VX1 or the Revel remote. And it's pretty pocketable uh, given its shape and its texture, it's pretty easy to shove in your pocket. And even once you put on the laser cut grip tape uh, upgrade, it'll probably still be pretty easy to put in your pocket and uh, just have around in general. So there you go, there's some footage to show you the size of this one versus some of the other ones. Let's talk a little bit about the durability and build quality of this remote. This remote is made out of plastic as are pretty much all other Eastgate remotes, minus maybe the Evolve Phase remote, which I believe is metal. But this plastic seems pretty thin if I'm being honest. I haven't actually opened up this remote yet and I'm not gonna open it in this video because I'm not sure if the internal hardware will change between now and the production one. But overall this build quality is decent. I wouldn't say that it's stellar. I'm not sure that I would really say that it's worth the price that this remote is releasing at. But it feels good overall and I think one of the improvements that Build Kit Boards is going to be making on this is that they're gonna be adding some more texture to the remote because right now it is pretty slippery. If you get sweaty hands, the remote itself is pretty easy to lose grip on. Now, I have uh, some metal bits on my gloves that I use and just after a tiny bit of time using it, it's already a bit scraped up and uh, I haven't even dropped this yet. So I'm a little bit concerned about the durability of this remote. Um, I'm sure that 
this was tested to some extent, but I'm not trying to break this right now. So I'm not really gonna test it for myself. Um, it's, it feels mostly solid, but another thing that does concern me is the fact that it's constructed with only a single screw and then the rest of it relies on uh, snap fit connections. An existing issue that I think is going to be fixed on the production model is that the back end of this remote can like pop open. If you try, you can see that I've pried it open a little bit. I'll show some B-roll of this, but you can pry open the back a little bit. And uh, I think that's because the snap here didn't engage properly, but in the production road, it should. And due to that, this can easily happen. This lanyard will just literally pull completely out of the remote. Same goes saying issue. Uh, Bill Kit Boards knows about it and they have addressed it in the upcoming upgrade. However, on the beta version, it came out pretty easily. And I'm not really 100% convinced on this construction. But again, beta remote, so could just be some issues with mine. Um, I'm not convinced on the durability of this actual plastic. I think it's going to get super scratched up, but it probably won't actually affect the usability of the remote, especially this uh, finger area. It feels pretty strong. Like I can't, I can't break it or anything like that. So I'm pretty confident in it overall. I think it would last a couple drops, but I would be concerned that some things inside might break due to the apparent uh, thinness of this plastic. Now, moving on to the top side, we've got our screen up here, which is covered in a pretty thick piece of plastic, which is always good to see. Um, LCD screens can be a little bit sensitive sometimes, so good to see that they've got nice protection up there. And then on the actual joystick itself, uh, according to Bill Kit Boards, this joystick is upgraded. Um, I don't know what that means exactly. I'm assuming that means it's higher quality than the ones that you'd find on a nunchuck. It feels very nice. The action is super smooth. There's no like catch points, no sticky bits or anything like that. And the plastic, which I think it says TPU on the site, on the top of it is over molded. So it's not gonna be coming off the top of your remote anytime soon. And it feels really nice and grippy, including that texture that they put on top of it. I'm really happy with how this joystick feels although I'm not convinced on leaving this left right open. Another improvement that will be made is they are offering a piece that will lock this into an up and down movement only. So that'll be nice to see. For me, I didn't really have many issues with going side to side, but <clears throat> seeing as there's no functions there, probably should just restrict it to an up down. Moving on to the buttons, we've got two clicky buttons on the top. They feel pretty nice. Go ahead and turn it on pretty easily. And when you're switching different functions on the remote, they work just fine. Uh, you hold both to turn it off on this current version. And as you might've been able to hear, inside is a vibration motor and that feels fine. I mean, feels no different than something like an old phone or uh, even the Hoyt Puck. So it's definitely a decent amount of haptic feedback. So. If you're wearing a glove and your remote, uh, for example, I don't know if this is an actual notification, but if it were to lose connection and it were to vibrate, then you would definitely be able to feel it. On the side of the remote, we've got a charge port here, which is filled with a nice little rubber grommet, and that houses the USB-C connection which is really nice to see included on this remote. Um, in 2021, pretty much everything is USB-C. So it's nice to see that included on here. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers all the different features on here. Again, it feels pretty strong. Seems like the plastic's a little thin, scratches easily. But overall, if I were to rate it, I would probably give it like an eight out of 10. It seems pretty nice given or provided they, that they fix this uh, case splitting issue. Now it's time to talk about the functionality on this remote, which is usually the most exciting part. So to turn this remote on, again, keep in mind that this is all beta, things might change in the firmware before you actually get your remote. But for me, press and hold the power button to turn it on. 
And then we are greeted with our main screen, which has the board battery voltage in the top center, the remote battery in the top right, a speed screen, your speed mode, a additional numerator on the bottom left, which I don't actually know what that's for. All right, so I did figure out what this was actually for. Uh, the bottom left hand here does show your battery amps and your motor amps, and it actually cycles through those two things. So um, I did remember this from when I was riding, but I couldn't remember it when I was recording the original video. So there you go. Um, I didn't ask Jared or anything. I believe your board battery amperage output and then we've got our mileage on the right. Now, I'm not sure if that's trip miles or overall miles. There isn't like a, a user guide for this remote quite yet, so I'm not 100% sure. Um, we have a what appears to be a forwards and reverse notation on the top. Afterthought Ryan coming in again here. So this forwards and reverse at the top, it's kind of weird how you uh, actually engage it, but you pull back the throttle and you press the option button. And to go back into forwards, you do it again. Now I can see this being a major issue on a board that has full current mode enabled because that would drive you uh, backwards. But if you're in a current brake only mode, then you'll be just fine. And that's pretty much all you get on your main screen. Now, if we go ahead and enter into the menus by pressing and holding the settings button, we can scroll through and see that there's a whole bunch of options to configure. In our board parameters, we'll just enter that and you can see your battery cells, your pole pairs, your wheel type, which you can select between pulley and uh, direct drive or hub motor. You've got your wheel diameter, your motor pulley, your wheel pulley, your uh, unit, which I guess can be imperial or metric. And uh, there's a typo in this firmware, but I'm sure that'll get fixed. And uh, that's pretty much all for that. After that, you got your ports config, which is super interesting. Um, I didn't really get the chance to mess around with this, um, but these are features that are on the actual receiver through different pins. You have PPM that you can output to, it appears uh, two ESCs, which is really nice for a four wheel drive setup. You got UART, and you can select which ESC it outputs to, I think. You got CAN bus, which you can turn on or off, and then you can reset your settings. In the receiver config, we've got some more interesting stuff. You got your binding, debinding, and uh, that's all. <laughs> In remote config, you can see how many times your remote has lost connection with your board which can be super useful uh, for troubleshooting, but it also has a lifetime counter on the right hand side to, I guess, see how many times you've turned your board on overall. Um, and the one on the left is your session counter. So I guess if you lose connection with it, um, you'll be able to see that there. And the revision at the top is the firmware version. And uh, hopefully we'll see that upgraded in the near future with the production version. So in here we've got an option to set high throttle, middle throttle, and low throttle. And I believe these are supposed to be configurable percentages of your total throttle on your board. I didn't really mess around with these too much in the time that I've used this. Um, I pretty much just ride in full throttle all the time. Our gear calibration here, honestly, I, <laughs> I don't know what this is for. I have not uh, messed around with this. For the firmware upgrade, it looks like you just plug it in and run the app on the PC, which I have not done yet either. I will definitely be doing that soon because I know there's uh, some features that are probably going to be added and tweaked. That pretty much covers everything on the remote here, but I wanna talk a little bit about some things that are on the receiver. On the receiver, you can see that there are quite a few pins. You got your, you got your main five volt grounds. You got ESC A, uh, transmit and receive. Receive. You got ESC B, transmit and receive. And then you've got a horn light, 
a can SW, which I'm not sure if that's software or switch or whatever that is. Um, and we've also got what looks like a BMX transmit, <laughs> sorry, BMS transmit. And I think all of these features are things that will be integrated into the actual spin tend U-Box ESC. Now, it's not clear as of yet if those features will be available to DIY builders to use with other VESC-based ESCs or if it's only going to work with the spin tend one, which would be kind of unfortunate if it only worked with that one, but you know, we're DIY, we'll figure out a way to use it with other things. But all those things should be controllable from the remote. The button presses and whatnot, I just don't know yet. Um, they've not been revealed to me, I've not asked, um, and I don't have a U-Box to test that with as of yet. Afterthought Ryan is back again. Today we are going to be showing you how to turn on the horn. The horn function can be activated by single pressing the power button. And then to turn on your light that would be connected to the spin tent U box, you press and hold the power button for about a second and a half and you can see the little torch icon comes on there. And then you press and hold it again to turn it off. Uh, but yeah, it seems like that there are quite a few features and uh, a couple things I noticed on here is you can press the power button to uh, blow the horn, which I believe is what that is. Sometimes the, the letter in the bottom left changes. Not really sure exactly what that is notating. And then your right button changes your speed modes. So hopefully you guys got a pretty decent overview of the functions that are available on here. I'm sorry, I don't know how to use all of them quite yet, but hopefully when an official user guide comes out for this, it will have all of those noted in it. Uh, with our betas, we didn't receive anything in the package, so <clears throat> I'm sure Jared is working on that. On to the next part, I typically like to keep the negativity down in my videos, but just a couple things that I didn't really fancy on this remote, I thought would be useful for me to point out for you guys. First of those is unfortunately the throttle. I honestly just am not a huge fan of this uh, nunchuck joystick kind of remote. And I guess there's more reasons than one why this didn't catch on uh, back in the day. But honestly, I'm still just not a huge fan. I don't think it's granular enough control for me. Uh, I think the side to side really doesn't help uh, that part as well. Maybe I'll like it better once I have the uh, up down locking piece but for now I think this is gonna come off this board and I'll try and put it on a different one maybe get some more miles on it see if I like it better there but yeah it's unfortunate but it's just not my thing the only other thing that I'm really not a huge fan of on this remote is the fact that it's super incompatible with gloves for me just way too slippery but fortunately this leads us into our next section that is something that uh, Build Kit Boards has taken into account and will be improving a little bit uh, upon full release. So it's time to get into some of the things that they are taking from the beta testing and bringing into the full production run. Just a couple more things that I wanted to mention before we move on to the improvements. Uh, the first is that this screen is pretty hard to see in bright sunlight. Uh, you might have to cup your hand over it. I think it could use a little bit of an improved brightness on here. And another one is just a random one, but on the receiver, the connector does not fit into the receiver very well. Um, I think this is an issue that's been addressed, but I don't remember seeing it specifically mentioned anywhere. Um, so I just wanted to mention it here, but other than that, pretty decent. So the team over at Build Kit Boards has taken our feedback into consideration, and here are some of the things that are going to be improved. First of all, they fixed the lanyard issue, which is a major one. Very easy to pull out of the back here. Uh, they added a clip on the inside, so it should stay in a lot better. They added some texture on the outside of the remote. Right now, it's honestly like a slippery banana, um, especially with the gloves on. It's all right with your hands because you can use your thumb or your uh, index finger to lock it in, but if you get sweaty, it's gonna fall. Um, Another thing they're improving is that they're adding a piece of laser cut grip tape that you can attach to the remote 
to give you a lot better grip on gloves and stuff like that. So that'll be nice. Um, Hoyt also uses some grip tape on their puck remotes and I think that's a great idea. There's also going to be an optional Y-axis throttle lock, so this can only move up and down. I definitely will want one of those for this remote. Um, I just don't think the side to side is necessary. They don't even use it in the menus, which is surprising. Maybe that's disconnected inside. The uh, Fang, which I actually haven't even showed you. I have it here, the uh, pre-production version here. It's useless very soft so i didn't even bother installing it um, but this piece is supposed to attach on the bottom like that to give you a little bit of extra grip on the remote i guess as it is right now it's hard to understand the actual purpose of it but um i guess the <laughs> version that ships with the full production models will be a much better material uh stronger and more, uh, more rigid, sorry. Uh, another improvement that they're making is that they're going to have four different color options. I think that that means just for the actual red bit here, but it could be the actual case. I'm not 100% sure. There will also be custom boot logo support on here. So when this boots up right now, it has just the text that says BKB remote, so that'll be cool to have an extra feature like that. They also are adding support for the Unity firmware that ships on uh, Xenus and Unity's by default, I think on Xenus. They might ship with the 5.2 firmware. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then don't worry about it, but some people will definitely appreciate that feature. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how Build Kit Boards has reacted to our feedback during the beta testing uh, section of their production. And I think you guys will really enjoy this remote. Um, it's coming in at a bit of a high price. And honestly, if I had to say, I probably wouldn't buy it personally. Um, I did buy this remote in the beta phase. It was a, a much lower price uh, for our beta testing. Um, the beta testers were picked out based on feedback and whatnot. So I did purchase it at a lower price, but um, yeah, I don't know if I would purchase it at the full price. It feels a little bit too cheap for me. I don't like it quite enough. And there's a couple things that are just odd. Um, you can't charge this on a USB-C to USB-C cable. Um, I don't really understand the reason behind that. It's something to do with the wiring, but only charge it with the uh, USB-A to USB-C cable. Um, it's a little slippery. Hopefully the grip tape will fix that. Yeah, I, I just don't see this being worth the amount of money that they're asking for it personally. So if you want to buy it, feel free to do so. It's a decent remote. It's got <clears throat> good battery life from what I hear. Uh, it's pretty comfortable for most things, but I don't know, it's just not for me. You know, everyone's gonna end up having their own opinion on it. And uh, for me, it's probably just going to stay on my shelf as a comparison piece, um, but I'll definitely give it one more go in a different board. And uh, I'll probably post some pictures to my Instagram and some feedback and see what I think of it in the future. But yeah, if you guys wanna find this uh, remote, there is an affiliate link down in the description. Um, if you guys decide that you want to buy a BKB Duo, there is also a discount code down there for you guys. So um, while this remote wasn't the 100% best experience for me, I do endorse build kit boards. Their stuff is pretty great. Their uh, kits are really great value. And I really appreciate what Jared has done and all the effort that he's put in. Um, Spin 10 was definitely involved in this too. So a uh, big shout out to them for producing the internals and uh, working with Jared on this pretty cool project. So it's always good to see another remote on the market. Uh, you know, like I said, not everyone's gonna like every single remote on the market. And this one was a little bit of a miss for me. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed sharing my thoughts with you guys. And um, yeah, keep on riding, stay safe and peace out.